This is an in-service training program presented by Nutrition Care Systems. Today's topic, Nutrition's Role in Wound Care. Today's learning objectives are to number one, understand energy and protein needs, Number two, discuss importance of nutritional assessments. And number three, understand skin integrity. As our bodies age, organs just do not always function as well as they once did. So skin integrity can be compromised by vascular deficiencies, decreased mobility and ability to reposition weight, uncontrolled blood sugars, dehydration, and malnutrition, and other comorbidities that come with advancing age. So not only can wounds, especially pressure ulcers, begin a cascade of health problems, they can really send the facility's quality measure and five-star rating downhill. Now, a comprehensive nutritional assessment is needed to determine if a resident's nutritional status is adequate in order to maintain their skin integrity and or support healing. Now, one indicator is weight loss. If there is an unintended weight loss greater than 10% in six months, wound healing is often impaired. And if the unintended weight loss exceeds 20%, wound healing generally stops and new wounds are likely to develop. Energy and protein needs are also increased when someone is malnourished or has a pressure ulcer because the body is in an increased metabolic state. Now those recommended daily requirements for calories can increase to 30 to 35 calories per kilogram of body weight. And also their protein needs are increased to 1.25 to 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. It's important to avoid dehydration and deficiencies in any micronutrients to support the continued healing of the pressure ulcer. And fluid balance is very important. It can be delicate in the elderly population, especially if they have CHF, congestive heart failure, and edema, but should be kept in consideration as dehydration can lead to skin to be becoming fragile and lose elasticity. Not only is the dietitian responsible for assessing what the resident needs for their healing, but also for recommending a nutritional intervention that's individualized and appropriate. Serving an additional serving of protein at a meal or meals for a resident with a good appetite may be considered to ensure protein needs are being supported. And also there is such a thing as too much protein. When protein intake exceeds the needs, the kidneys are responsible for processing the excess and that can be taxing on the kidneys and harmful to those who have chronic kidney disease. Now, if a resident has a non-healing wound and is consuming enough protein, it's important to look at other factors that are needed for wound healing. For example, blood glucose control, turning and repositioning, incontinence, etc. Let's take a short quiz about nutrition's role in wound care. Skin integrity can be compromised by A, vascular deficiencies, B, uncontrolled blood sugars, C, decreased mobility, or D, all of the above. And the answer to question number one, skin integrity can be compromised by D, all of the above. Question number two, Energy needs are increased when someone is malnourished or has a pressure ulcer. How much are they increased by? A, 10 to 20 kilocalories per kilogram of body weight per day. B, 50 kilocalories per kilogram. C, 45 kilocalories per kilogram. Or D, 30 to 35 kilocalories per kilogram. And the answer to question number two is D, 30 to 35 kilocalories per kilogram of body weight per day. Question number three, fluid balance can be delicate in the elderly population, especially when blank is or are present. A, eczema, B, diabetes, C, CHF and edema, or D, none of the above. 
And the answer to question number three, fluid balance can be delicate in the elderly population, especially when C, CHF, and edema are present. Question number four, serving an additional serving of protein at a meal or meals for a resident with a good appetite may be considered to ensure protein needs are being supported. And the answer to question number four, serving an additional serving of protein at a meal or meals for a resident with a good appetite may be considered to ensure protein needs are supported is true. Number five, there is no such thing as too much protein. True or false? And the answer to question number five is false. There is such a thing as too much protein that could be too taxing on the kidneys. Thank you for your participation in today's program. Our goal is for you to use this information in your daily work. We hope you are well served today and every day. If you would like more information about our in-service training programs or consulting dietitian services, please contact us at Nutrition Care Systems, 1-800-761-9200 or nutritioncaresystems.com.